there are those with skills, powers and abilities that defy all logic. In recent years, the children of gods, other worlds, even mutations within mankind have become commonplace. And, while so much is going on, a secret war had come to Earth, a war between two factions of an alien race. They arrived during a meteor shower one night, a group of aliens who had come to Earth in hopes of finding a new home, while others of their kind wanted to bring back their homeworld at the expense of ours. These extraterrestrial beings were a form of inorganic life that could take on various forms by transforming their robotic bodies into that of other objects and even people they have come across and scanned. This allowed them to blend in and, as one might suspect, look like ordinary people, despite the fact there is more than meets the eye. One of these otherworldly robots was known as Hot Rod, a rather brash and headstrong member of the Autobot faction. Of course, he decided to take on the role of a race car driver, which only played into his rather inflated self-confidence, but this was just his daily appearance so he blended in well. Going by the name Rodimus, he soon took Storm as one of the fastest drivers in New York. The city he landed, well, more like crash landed in. However, like most Autobots from his planet, Hot Rod had a strong sense of right and wrong, which, strangely enough, coincided with the morals of right and wrong on Earth. Guess it's a smaller universe than we thought. Due to this, Hot Rod decided to take on another alter ego, as if blending in during the day wasn't enough, but he decided he could get away with it. After all, every day, no matter where you looked, there was mention or sightings of superheroes. Those with powers, using them to help people, and Hot Rod decided this would be perfect for him. He could search for others of his kind, or helping those of this world. It was at that point Hot Rod decided to become a superhero. His superhero name? Well, that was a bit of a tricky one. He couldn't use his original name. He was using that for his everyday identity. It was at that point Hot Rod came to mind. It was his nickname and what the other Autobots knew him as. But of course this did also mean he could attract the wrong type of a reunion from his home planet by the other faction in the war between the Autobots and the Decepticons. It did take a while, but due to his ability to transform, he finally settled on the superhero name, Blazing Blaster. And the form looked like a human, but it did allow him to use his cybernetic abilities without revealing who he really was. After some time doing heroics in and around New York, his spark was blown when he ended up teaming up with a local web swinger. So one of his team ups, the Hot Rod, while using his identity as Blazing Blaster, mainly because he was using blasters and his superhero outfit was rather colourful attire, mainly red, yellow and orange. All of a sudden, Blazing Blaster and Spidey heard a loud roaring sound. Initially, Spidey thought it was old scaly face, the lizard causing trouble downtown. You can imagine his surprise when he saw the roar had come from a giant dinosaur, roaming around the zoo, scaring anyone in its path. So at this point, Blazing Blaster turned around and Spidey and said, I think I know that guy. This was an even bigger surprise to Spidey. Wait, you know this roaming T-Rex that should be extinct? Blazing Blaster turned around and told Spidey, it's a long story but explain everything as soon as they calm the big guy down. Spidey was a bit lost for words, which was a rarity. However, he did trust Blazing Blaster's words and the pair decided to try and tame this prehistoric beast. Spidey shot some webbing at the dinosaur's face, trapping its mouth shut for a short time while Blazing Blaster went up close, shooting it with an orange beam from his, well, his blaster. The blasts did seem to have a calming effect on the T-Rex, although mildly. So at this point, the T-Rex arched itself upright and forced its mouth open, ripping the webbing apart as if it was nothing but a sheet of paper. Spidey was a little bit shocked by this. Looks like someone had ticked the dino off. That read some serious anger management issues. It was at this point the T-Rex swung its tail at Spidey, and as he dodged it effortlessly, he noticed that the tail was, well, it wasn't organic as it seemed. He noticed that as it hit the metal railing, it sounded like metal hitting metal, and his keen observation skills spotted what looked like a metal substance covering the tail. So at this point, he turned to Blazing Blaster and shouted, is this a dino or a robot? Blazing Blaster replied, how could you tell? Just let me get in close to this guy and bring him back to his senses. I'm sure we can sort this out. Without the need for any more fighting. All of a sudden, Blazing Blaster began to move as agile and gracefully as Spidey. Hey, those are my moves. Since when could you move like me? Is that like some kind of cheat code or something? No fair. 
shouted Spidey. But at this point, Blazing Blaster had managed to get all the way under the T-Rex. Spidey was midway through asking how he was going to speak to a dinosaur when Blazing Blaster suddenly delivered an almighty uppercut. If he wasn't wearing his mask, Spidey's jaw would have hit the floor. He was in shock that Blazing Blaster's solution was an uppercut, although to his surprise, Blazing Blaster did send the dinosaur flying up and into the wall, before something he never imagined happened. Spidey was amazed that the dinosaur started to change, to transform, becoming a giant robot. So at this point, Blazing Blaster shouted, Hey Grimlock, I knew it was you. What happened to you, you big lughead? Why were you on a rampage? Oh wait, yeah, hey Grim, you might want to take on a new form to blend in. Giant robots aren't really a thing on this planet and you don't want to scare the locals. Spidey's mind was blown as the giant robot started to transform again until it became a masked character, much like a superhero, with a tail, a T-Rex head on one of its hands, and a helmet that was similar to his robot form. Blazing Blaster turned around and told Grimlock, that looks insane. The new look suits him. Spidey jumped down and started to talk to the new dinosaur masked person, robot thing. He wasn't sure what to do, but started by saying, so you're Grimlock. Grimlock looked at him and said, call me Grim Rex. While there were members of the Autobots on Earth, there were also Decepticons, those who wanted to bring their home planet back at the expense of what they called useless flesh bags. Well, this was the famous term for Starscream. The commander and second in command of the leader of the Decepticons, Megatron. However, Starscream wasn't a completely useless fool. Much like how he came across to the rest of the Decepticons with his countless failures during this ongoing war with the Autobots, even he saw the need to blend in with the humans in order to find his fellow Decepticons, as well as to get access to things he would need for when Megatron arrives on Earth. After noticing that there were supervillains, as they were called, Starscream decided to go by the name Screaming Star, just mixing around his name a bit and still keeping most of the colours and plane type features of his robotic form in this humanoid form. It was very obvious to anyone who saw him and knew who Starscream was, they would easily be able to identify him. Of course, the humans didn't know who he was. Well, other than the human supervillain, the Screaming Star, mainly due to his super high and whiny voice. Despite this, for a time, Screaming Star was able to get away with quite a few high-tech robberies without leaving a trace. But as he started to make more of a name for himself within the villain circles, more and more heroes became aware of his presence. It wasn't long before Screaming Star was seen on TV, and a lot of people started to shout when they saw him. Not only because of his rather strange airplane-like costume, but it was calling himself Screaming Star. It just sounded ridiculous. Nothing about their costume, name or abilities resembled anything to do with a star. Although they all agreed he got the screaming bit right. Not even a Karen was as annoying as his voice was. On one of his high-tech crime sprees, Screaming Star ran into Blazing Blaster and Grim Rex, who happened to be keeping an eye on a piece of tech that would be compatible with the other tech that had gone missing recently. As soon as Screaming Star saw Blazing Blaster and Grim Rex, he shouted out, Die, Autobot scum! and began to fire at them. They both took cover and Blazing Blaster started to fire back as Grim Rex transformed into a giant T-Rex and barely missed biting the wing and arm of Screaming Star. Screaming Star started to scream at the heroic pair, going off on his typical delusional monologue, leaving him wide open for Blazing Blaster hitting with an energy blast, causing him to fall down and scream as he fell out of the air. As he hit the ground, a Blazing Blaster and Grim Rex walked over and stood before him. Knowing full well that the authorities weren't able to contain this Decepticon menace, they decided to take him back to their base, the stronghold where they'd been searching for other Autobots hiding on Earth. It was just they were about to take Screaming Scar with them that they felt disorientated and fell to their knees. Screaming Star laughed and called them foolish as they'd fallen into his trap. As of the shadows, an all too familiar figure emerged in a humanoid form. This mastery of sound waves meant it could only be one Decepticon in particular, the expert of communications and master of manipulating sound waves. It looks like the heroic pair were in a dire predicament. <music> Emerging from the shadows was the Decepticon master of communication and sound waves. Sound wave. Using his mastery of the sonic scale, he kept Blazing Blaster and Grim Rex at bay, weakening them. 
As he came out of the shadows, his form was similar to Screaming Stars in the fact that it was more like his robotic form than anything else. A speaker-like feature was on his helmet, allowing him to focus his sonic attacks at any target around him he wished. Of course, this meant that he could also target other Decepticons, if Megatron ordered him to. As he got closer, the disorientating effect of the sound waves began to intensify, causing Blazing Blaster and Grim Rex to scream out in pain. Screaming Star was reveling in another monologue, taking credit for this oh-so-ingenious plan to capture the Autobots. This was causing more pain to Blazing Blaster's ears than the sonic attack from Soundwave, and he made a point of letting Screaming Star know this, which only infuriated him and caused him to aim his arm blasters at Blazing Blaster while threatening to blast them into scrap metal. Soundwave, who now went by the name Soundmaster, rarely said much, but the one phrase he did like to say to the Autobots was Soundwave Superior, Autobots Inferior. However, he did insist to Screaming Star that the pair should be terminated instead of captured. It was clear that Screaming Scar and Soundmaster didn't completely see eye to eye, and Blazing Blaster decided to use this to his advantage, telling Soundmaster that Screaming Star was ignoring his judgement and saying, what would Megatron think if you didn't get rid of the Autobot threat instead of capturing them like he was planning to? Soundmaster turned to the Autobots and said, I must terminate them for Lord Megatron. Before anyone else could say anything, Soundmaster was hit by a laser blast. However, this blast wasn't from one of the Autobots under his control. It was from Screaming Star, who was furious that Soundmaster disobeyed his commands. He was the second in command of Megatron, and what he says goes while Megatron wasn't there. Soundmaster stopped his sonic attack on the Autobots when he was hit by the energy blast, and as soon as he looked up, he targeted Screaming Star with a sonic attack, bringing him to his knees in agony. This allowed Blazing Blaster and Grimrex to get away far enough to regroup as they watched the pair of Decepticons fighting each other. Once they had both got their bearings and were not feeling the effects of the sonic attack, Blazing Blaster spotted the tech that was stolen lying on the ground and decided to sneak over and get it while Screaming Star was distracted. Blazing Blaster grabbed the piece of tech and made a swift retreat with Grimrex. Screaming Star screamed at Sound Master, saying, Look at what you've done! They're getting away! But it was too late. With a couple of well-placed shots by Blazing Blaster, Screaming Star and Soundmaster were stopped in their tracks while the side of a building came down on them. By the time the pair had dug their way out, Blazing Blaster and Grimrex were nowhere to be seen and were long gone with a piece of stolen tech, leaving Screaming Star and Soundmaster to go back and explain themselves to their leader. This was super fun, but I have to say I had a real difficult time taking Transformers and putting them in the Marvel superhero universe. More for the designs, I couldn't tell whether I wanted to be more the Gen 1 designs like I've done that were obvious or completely tweak the design somewhat. I think maybe if I do some in the future I might mix and match that feel up a bit. But this is also a collab between myself and some of the other artists in the group. Kingpin Creations, Nerd Comics Inc and Knight of Arcane. We all decided it'd be quite fun with the new Transformers 1 movie coming out to do a video where we take Transformers and we do something with them. So be sure to check out their videos. 